Hi, Christian. How you doing? This is Gustavo Cortina speaking. And uh, for your lesson today, uh, since you're not going to be here, I figured uh, that we could do a little bit of technique stuff. And I'll, because we've talked about this a lot, but it takes off a lot of time. So it's usually not something that I can do with you in the lesson, at least not as patiently, because we got to move forward to other stuff. But I was thinking for today, we could, uh, I could do a little routine with you here on the drums and that way uh, you'll be able to play along with me if you want. Usually I would do this with a metronome but just because it's just you and me right now with the camera and you're not going to be able to hear the metronome properly I think. It's not a good way of hooking it up. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna uh, imagine a tempo and then we're gonna do it together I'm gonna explain. So first of all, let's review a little bit about how we grab the sticks, okay, Christian? We start kind of a third around along the st stick, kind of a third, roughly. If it's a little bit more, a little bit less, no biggie, but let's try to not do this and let's try to not do this, okay? So this looks about right. We start with these two fingers and then we loosely wrap the other fingers around it loosely why because we want the stick to be able to bounce up all the way okay so we've talked about this a few times but ideally when we're practicing just with one hand let's practice if you were looking at my hand here you'll see it strike it starts not parallel or less than parallel which would be like this or parallel like this but it starts like this. In order to be do this, it means that the wrist needs to go all the way back and the fingers need to open it up. This makes sure that we are relaxed and that, uh, and that we're getting a good bounce, okay? And then we can just send the stick with a good attack and bounce it like a basketball. We've talked about that, right? And same with the other hand. Of course, we do it in a relaxed position. I'm just doing it a little bit to the side so you can get a, a better view. And it's a good exercise, Christian, for you to just practice first with one hand a little bit, you know? And you can practice different tempos, you know? If it was me at home, I would probably do this for at this tempo for one minute or more, maybe really focus on my bounces when it feels good another minute pinch to the other hand you know always making sure that sticks coming beyond parallel which means the wrist is coming back but also the fingers are opening so that the stick can go that far back you know and you stay with left hand for a little while and then you be like I'm gonna do it a little bit faster with the right hand so this we reach to a new tempo I don't know exactly which tempo I'm doing right now but usually I would go up like 10 clicks you know if that makes sense and just focus on once again going be above parallel fingers relaxed like bouncing a basketball you know you let it come up only one movement not but sticks coming up relaxed the whole way okay you do it for a little minute you know and when we're ready The next thing you know and you go up really slowly with tempos you know with your metronome make sure you're locking up with that click make sure you're relaxed above parallel fingers relaxed and everything you know Woo, see it's so relaxed that if if I was doing this, we've talked about this if I was doing that same mo movement away from the drum it would just go down, you know? That's how relaxed it is. This movement, outside of the drum, means 
goodbye. Okay? And then you can speed it up even more. Once you go faster, you can't go this far back anymore because you don't have time. But since you did it that far back when you were doing it slower, it means you're guaranteeing that your hand is going to be really relaxed. And that's why we want that relaxation at the beginning, you know. We never needed to come that back up, but coming that back up guaranteed that we were that relaxed. So that when we speed up, we're not doing that thing, which makes us lose a lot of time and therefore makes it impossible for us to go fast. So that's what, and then the other exercise that I do a lot, once I have my singles on each hand and I'm feeling like each hand is feeling more or less nice, you know, then I like to do this thing where I, I'll take the click and I'll do 16th notes, but I'll do them really slow, you know, and, and I'll just do something like, once again, I'll do probably about a minute here. As soft as I can, really relaxed. And after a minute of doing this, focus on stick height, okay? If you see, mostly my stick is coming up, both of them to the same height, which means they're roughly doing the same dynamic, you know? You don't want one to be louder like than the other, like this, or this. You want them to be roughly the same height, the same dynamic level. And then after a minute of doing that, we go up after a minute. And then after a minute, faster. Control however we want to play with the group, okay? The other exercise that I have taught you that is really good to play, I'm just going to do it at a faster tempo, and you can do this every day. It's one of the best exercises. We've talked about this, but do 8, 8, 16, 8, 8, 16. So 8 right, 8 left, 16 right, 8 left, 8 right, 16 left. So it ends up being like
maybe a little faster. So those are two exercises that are really good for your single strokes, okay? It's a good thing to start uh, working on. And uh, usually it's going to be good for you to have this video because then you can go back and you could look at different things, you know, and, and, and add new things as you go along as you get better with perfecting this technique because it takes uh, lots of days of days of days. I do this every day, you know, it takes days to perfect it and to keep it going and then to keep improving it too, you know. And then the other thing that you will notice is that, remember I said you start like this and the more you speed up, your stick's gonna come up a little bit less. At the beginning you're using mostly just wrist, but as you start spinning up, wrist starts moving a little bit less, and towards the end, you're starting incorporating more fingers. So it's a good, always remember that almost every stroke from this one is just everything, you know, and then the faster you start getting, you start doing smaller movements than to the wrist. Just wrist, wrist with a little bit of finger. Just finger at the end, you know? Okay, so those are the six. And then, since we were talking about this, I'm going to start talking to you about doubles. I think we talked to, about this a little bit, but doubles are very important. They allow us to play really cool rudimental stuff and faster stuff around the drums, you know? So, to me, one of the things that has helped me the most to play my doubles is to get a good single. Why is that? Because once you have a good single, you have a good bounce, and if you manage to control that bounce, you can get a good, strong second stroke, like this. I'm gonna pretend, I'm gonna do doubles like one and one, so you can see how. As you can see, the second stroke comes from controlling the, the bounce of the first one. If you have a good bounce, good relaxed bounce of the first one, it improves your chances of having a strong second one. Okay, and of course that's just to, we do triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, just so that we can really focus on the double on one hand. But then ultimately what we're going to do is right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Notice how I'm getting relaxed, strokes on both hands the beginning and I'm controlling that bounce and that bounce is what creates a second stroke and also you can do them soft or loud just like with the singles, okay? So that's a little uh, lesson on singles and doubles. I think uh, 
getting our hands to be relaxed and to be have good control has been one of our challenges. So I, I really wanted you to be able to focus on that. And now just a couple of fun little getting around the drum exercises that we can talk about, you know, just for fun, not nothing too big or anything, but I might actually put the camera up here. We've done a couple of these, but I'm just going to remind you of whatever of what we did and then talk about what we haven't done. So the first one is getting quarter notes on the foot. Two, ready, go. One, two, ready, and just go. One, two, quarter notes. Quarter notes. That's a really good exercise. I like it for drum fills. And then you speed it up. And then you can mix them. My teacher used to call this one the Houdini. I'm going to show you this one. It's a Houdini because it looks really hard, but it's a lot easier. It's six strokes. Tom, snare, snare, tom, floor, tom, floor, tom. tricky uh so yeah those are a couple exercises have fun with them and come with some questions next time and uh we'll see what's up and i'll try not to drop this computer bye boss